Good evening. Good to see you all. It's a wonderful Wednesday. It's good to be together, right? Amen. I just love being able to come together on a Wednesday night, be refreshed in worship, and just kind of be able to come together and hear the word. We are continuing our series on the Holy Spirit. Have you been enjoying this series? It's so good. So tonight we're going to continue in the idea of the Holy Spirit is leading us. But before we do, I always like to just take a moment and acknowledge and honor our lead pastor, my husband. And I just always like to be able to share with you how proud I am of him and how it is so great to see that he's such a great leader off stage to us, to our home, to our kids, to me as, a, as his wife. And so I just want to take a moment and honor him. So if we could um, just give a shout out to Pastor Obed. Love you, babe. All right. You ready to get into the word tonight? Come on. Let's stand on our feet. And we are going to step into our opening scripture, which is Psalm 25, verses 4 and 5. And it says, Lord, direct me throughout my journey so I can experience your plans for my life. Reveal the life paths that are pleasing to you. Escort me along the way and take me, take me by the hand and teach me for you are the God of my increasing salvation. I have wrapped my heart into yours. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you that we have just the beauty of your presence. God, we lean in on you tonight. We thank you. We call upon you to continue to lead us, to guide us, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord. We lean into your word tonight. We thank you for the spirit of revelation, illumination, and transformation that we will not be the same after hearing this message tonight. We give you all the honor and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Give somebody a high five. Tell them they are all that and a bag of chips with a Kit Kat in the bag. You know, in the early years of starting Destiny Church, we brought in um, a consultant that came in, and they, they were helping us with our staff and with our teams, and, and I remember we were doing this exercise, and it was the first time we were all, like, getting together, and they're like, okay, great, we're going to do this exercise, and we said, okay, great. So we get together, and they say, okay, now I want you to tell your worst story, the baddest thing, what has, the worst thing that happened to you, I want you to tell it. And so we all get together. People are crying. I mean, we're telling, like, bad things that have happened to us, right? And so then he says, okay, now I want you to tell that story again, but I want you to retell it in a way of taking some form of personal responsibility. And everyone's like, personal responsibility? Like, what do you mean, you know? And so then we find ourselves retelling the same story in a little bit better light because we realize there were probably some things that we could have done to help change some of those events. And so that doesn't apply to necessarily everything we go to in life, but it does apply to a lot of things. And I remember at the end of that exercise, he asked us, he said, does anybody here feel like during that exercise it helped you to think back of some moments of throughout that journey that you could have made some different decisions along the way? And many of us said, yes, absolutely. And, you know, he said, those nudges that you had during that journey, those are the nudges of the Holy Spirit. And those hunches that you have, look at somebody and say, it's more than a hunch. Those hunches that you have are not necessarily just indigestion or bad sleep. A lot of times, there's these nudges that the Holy Spirit nudges us. And he's letting us know, hey, that's probably not the best decision to make. Hey, those are probably not the best people to hang out with. Have you ever felt that? You know, kind of, and you kind of ignore them sometimes. Do you realize that every time we, we end up in indecisiveness, our indecision is actually making a decision? Because our indecisiveness really decides what our next decision is going to be. And so every day our lives are faced with choices. And our choices that we make define who we are. Sometimes great choices, sometimes not so great. Great thing about the grace of God, right? His mercies are new every morning. So when we make those mistakes, we're like, God, thank you that today I'm going to make some better choices in my life. You know, but when you think about all the different choices that we have, 
indecision comes along. Maybe even tonight you're sitting here with some big decisions. Some of you are facing decisions. I know for me, I'm thinking about what am I going to do from, with my kids for the summer, right? Some of you have bigger choices in front of you, some big decisions on jobs, businesses, maybe some big decisions on getting married, staying in my marriage, leading our children, how we're going to discipline, you know, just different things like that. And, you know, in the, every choice that we make, what is the antidote is really leaning in and saying, I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to lead me. The Bible says in Romans 8, 14, it says, as many as, as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Do you realize that when we have a relationship with the Lord, evidence of our relationship with him is him leading our lives? Is, is him being able to give us direction on our decisions. You know, it also says in John 16, 13, when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will what? Guide you. He will guide us into all truth. The Holy Spirit will constantly lead us into truth. Now, many of us who have experienced truth know that truth is not always easy. Sometimes truth is painful because it causes a little bit of a pinch, you know? You know, I remember my mom used to pinch me in church. And why? Because the truth was I wasn't paying attention. I was talking and playing around. Sometimes truth hurts us, right? But when he leads us into truth, he won't speak on his own. He'll speak only what he hears and what he tells you is what to come. So how do we know? How do we know if some of these nudges are just indigestion or if it's really the leading of the Holy Spirit? How do we know how to really hear the voice of the Lord? You know, last week I had the opportunity, let me say it in a nice way, the opportunity to go with my daughter on her fifth grade science class trip. It was a camping trip. Yay. Yeah. And uh, though all you campers out there, like, high fives to you. I think you are the most bravest people in the world. I don't know about you, but black widows, spiders, bees, they don't really like me, and I don't really care for them either, you know. So camping in a tent in the rain is not really my ideal time. But it was a lot of fun, and we made a lot of great memories. And what we do for our kids, right? Hey, come on. And so on this camping trip, one of the days that we were there, they said, hey, we're all going to take a hike. And so we all decided we were going to take this hike and we're going to follow the guide. And they took us. And here's a picture of kind of where we were going. You know, everyone's really excited. We're starting to hike. You can see we're on Catalina. So it was definitely a beautiful place. And we're going and, you know, taking pictures and so forth. And then all of a sudden we stopped. And when we stopped, this next picture kind of shows you. We stopped and there was this little, like, little water area. And there's these little tadpoles inside and they're showing them and one of the other boys there you know was catching them so all these little tadpoles so we stopped there for five or ten minutes and everybody had a chance to kind of catch them or take pictures with them and then the guide said okay it's time for us to keep going everyone let's go and so we kept going on our journey and I thought about it and I realized that you know life is filled with journey on this journey it's filled with a course of stops and starts you know, we have to stop things in life, and then there's times when we have to start things. And, you know, so many times it's hard for us to start things if we haven't stopped things. Like, for example, if you have things that are echoing in your ear and music and all these things, if other things are happening around you, sometimes it's hard to start something else if you're still engaged in something. You know, this morning, even my son, he was starting to, you know, to read, and he goes, Mom, I can't read right now. I can't focus because the music's on. And I'm like, well, just tune the music out. And he's like, I can't. Like, you know, and I realize at his age, he can't manage both of those. Now, as we mature in our age and as we mature in Christ, other things, we can manage other things more in our area. But as we continue to grow in our life, we got to realize that there's stops and starts. So how do I allow the Holy Spirit to lead me? Number one is that we have to stop. There's a few things that I think would help us to hear the voice and to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit better if, number one, we stopped following the people. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 7, 
And it says, Dear children, do not let anyone lead you the wrong way. Christ is righteous. So to be like Christ, a person must do what is right. I don't know about you, but people don't always do what is right. And so we have to find the right people around us that we want to follow, that we want to hang with, that are going to be influential in our lives, that are going to be the ones that are going to help us to become more and more Christ-like. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to, like, just get rid of everybody, but we have to decide who are we following, You know, on this little camping trip, we all got to the top of that area. And then right when we got there, the guide said, you can take a moment, look around at the beautiful view. But on this water tank, we are not going to pick up our rocks and we are not going to write our names on the tower tank. And so we all said, okay. So we're all taking pictures. And guess what? We turn and there's some people riding on the water tank, right? And I look around the corner, and it's this cute little girl that you know did not probably start this. And I said, what are you doing, sweetheart? Remember, she said, well, everybody else was doing it, so I wanted to do it. You know, when we find ourselves doing what everybody else is doing, it's going to get us into trouble. You know, nowadays, what is legal is not necessarily morally right and right according to the standards of the Word of God. And so the Bible says in Proverbs 13, 20, walk with the wise and become wise for a companion of fools suffers harm. So the first one is stop following people. You know, you think about when I walk into a room, I have the opportunity that I can just, I can assess the temperature. Many of you, you walk into your workplaces and you go, oh wow, there's a lot of drama in here today, right? Or some, sometimes you walk in, uh, my kids are like, you know, laughing. I'm like, oh, this is a great, great temperature. This is good. You know, as influencers, as people who are following the Lord, as the Holy Spirit is leading us, we should be able to go into a a room and be able to change the temperature. We shouldn't allow the temperature to change us. We should be the ones who walk in and we say, And we say, oh, wow, if there's a lot of drama in here, I'm going to bring peace. I'm going to bring comfort. You know, if somebody is scared, I'm going to help them be, be comforted right now and not be fearful. And so we have that opportunity, not following people. The second thing is stop following the pattern. Exodus 23, 2 says, do not follow the crowd in doing wrong. You know, there was a time uh, when Jesus was in front of the Pharisees, and it says in John chapter 8, verses 12 through 15, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And the Pharisees challenged him, and they said, here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not even valid. So Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid for, listen to this, I know where I came from, and I know where I'm going. Wouldn't that be great if we all could say that very confidently? I know where I'm going. I know where I'm headed. I know what I'm on purpose and on task to do today. I know what, what, my, what I'm destined to do that today, this week, this year. He says, I know where I'm going, but you have no idea where I came from, where I'm going, because why? You judge by human standards. He's saying, don't follow the pattern. Don't follow the pattern of human standards. Don't follow the pattern of this world because that pattern is not necessarily the pattern that God has designed for our life. You know, if we try to measure ourselves up to, you know, Sister Cantaloupe and Sister Watermelon and Brother Coffee, you know, we're never going to measure up to who God wants us to be. Remember what pastors saying in this series, the Holy Spirit makes me the best me. It doesn't make me better than somebody else. It makes me the best me. And so Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person, changing the way you think, then you will what? 
learn and know God's will for you. So many of us are asking, God, why is it so hard for me to decide to know what your will is? How come I can't make a decision on this? How come I don't know? Do I, do I stay in this? Do I not? Do I change my mind? Do I go forward? Why don't we know? Because I wonder if there's too much chatter, too many things going on outside of us. Are we looking for answers on Facebook and Instagram? Are we looking for answers from the news? Are we looking for answers from our friends? All of those are great, but at the end of the day, the Holy Spirit has been assigned to us to be our counselor and to be our guide. And so we have to take time to listen and say, Holy Spirit, what do you want from me today? Let me not try to live up to the pattern that somebody else is trying to create for me, but let me live up to the pattern that you have designed for me. What does that line up for for me today so that I can do your will? You know, the next one is stop. We have to stop following the phenomenon. You know, nowadays everybody's enraptured by the latest and the greatest. And in Proverbs says, you may think you're on the right road and still end up dead. Isn't that funny? Have you ever felt that way? Like, man, I thought... I was going the right way. And then all of a sudden, everything just kind of seemed to crash and burn. You know, why does that happen? Is because sometimes we get, we get, you know, caught up in the phenomenon. We get caught up in the latest trends, the latest and the greatest, you know. And I think about, like, when we were in singles ministry, Pastor Brian and I were talking about this week, that there was this girl that, you know, that she said, okay, I'm going to put my quarter into the little machine. And when, I, and when, when she twisted it and, she, and something came out, it was a little ring. And she said, oh, good, this means that I'm going to be married, that, that I'm supposed to get married. And so guess what? She started looking for somebody to marry. How many of us do the same thing? We put our little quarter in and we say, oh God, if this happens, then that means that I'm supposed to get with this person. I'm supposed to start dating this guy. Oh my God, I'm so excited. It's going to be amazing. And then you stop coming to church and then you wonder what happened. You know, we, we can't allow it to take us away from the standards of who God has called us to be. And so if we're following something based on a circumstance, that should line back up with the word of God for our lives. You know, so many times we follow whatever is happening. Think about circumstances, you know. Well, then I guess if Jonah was thinking about circumstances, I guess he would have been okay, right? Because his circumstance was he was running from God. So guess what? Went to the boat. Boat said, okay, great. We have a ticket for you. Guess what? We have a seat. Oh, that means it's from God. Hey, do you have the money for it? I have the money for it. Oh, must be from God. I'm going to get out on this boat. So many times we base things on circumstances. But Jonah inside of him already knew that he was making the wrong decision. You know, let's think about what happened to some people here in Acts chapter 27. You know, Paul is warned the people. And he said, men, he said, I believe there's trouble ahead if we keep going on. Have you ever felt like the Holy Spirit is saying, stop, I believe there's trouble ahead, that there's even counselors and, and pastors who have said, wait, I don't know if that's the best decision. I think that there's going to be trouble ahead. And so what did they say? He said, there's going to be shipwreck and loss of cargo and danger to our lives. And so when a light wind began blowing from the south, they thought they could make it. How many of us think about, oh, but look, there's a light wind. So that must mean that this is the way to go. All of a sudden, I, somebody bought me a ticket, and I'm going to go with them, and we're going to go over here. All of a sudden, this thing happened. We base our decisions, our life-altering decisions, on circumstances. And we have to decide that we're not going to do that because look what happened. Then the sailors thought that they could make it. So they pulled up, anchor, and sailed close to the shore of Crete. And the weather changed. We all know that what that feels like, right? You're like, man, what happened? I thought this was the best business venture. I thought this was the best relationship. I thought this was the best decision. And then all of a sudden, the weather changed changed abruptly and a wind of a big typhoon strength burst across the island blew us out to sea and the sailors couldn't turn the ship into the wind so they gave up and let it run before the gale how many of us have given up 
on things because we made a wrong decision maybe in the beginning. I want to encourage you that let's keep going. Let's not stop in that failure. Let's not stop in that disappointment. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to come back in and redirect us and keep going forward. Use circumstances to discern God's will and but um, don't use them to I'm sorry don't use them to discern God's will use them to confirm his will does that make sense so use those circumstances to say well wait this already lines up with everything else right so it's it's an add-on um, the next thing that not only we stop but now number two is start so we've stopped a few things and now we're going to start so the first thing we start is asking Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you. Tonight was a great example. Tonight we sang a phenomenal song. We felt the presence of the Lord as we're worshiping him. Pastor Brian came up and encouraged us. Hey, let's ask. We're asking God, build my life. It says, Psalm 119 says, guide me into the paths that please you, for I take delight in all that you say. So let's ask, God, Holy Spirit, would you please guide me today? Would you please lead me? I've got some big decisions that are lying in front of me, but thank you, God, that you're going to lead me today and, and down your paths of righteousness. These are kind of little ABCs. A is ask. B is look to the Bible. The word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path, Psalm 119, 105. So when we ask God, when we ask the Holy Spirit, lead me, guess where he's going to give us answers? Guess where he's going to give us answers? In the word. Guess why you don't have answers? I'll say that one again. Guess where he gives us the answers? In the word. Guess why we don't have the answers? Okay? So our friends are great. You know, all the sermons you can find online, phenomenal. But if you don't ask the Lord to show you by, you, by us physically opening up the word of God and asking, Holy Spirit, speak to me through your word today, then how do we have the instructions? How do we know what, what the next plan is for our life? The Holy Spirit will, and, and, and if you open and you're like, I don't even know where to start, ask. Ask ask a pastor. Ask a leader. Ask somebody to help you. Where do I begin? How do I open the word? And ask the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that he is our revelator. He will reveal the word into our hearts. He'll reveal his truth into our hearts. So ask, look to the Bible, and see is consent consent to his will. We don't want to ask and find the answer and then just decide, eh, I don't want to go that way. Consenting to his will. Listen to this one. Psalm 32 says, I hear the Lord saying, I will stay close to you, instructing you and guiding you along the pathway for your life. I will advise you along the way and lead you forth with my eyes as your guide. So guess what? If we're going to ask him to lead us and we're going to ask him to guide us, then we're going to have to be willing to, to go where he's leading us. You know, I'm just saying, you know, when we were at camp last week, I wasn't really that excited to go on that little hike, you know. But guess what? I knew there was a guide that was going to lead us where to go. And so we all followed the guide. And, you know, the great thing about having a guide is you're not alone. So you're not alone. And secondly, you don't have to come up with the path yourself. It's already there. Holy Spirit is there. God says that he goes before us. So if he goes before us, he's walked that path. He's got it. Just all we have to do is just follow his lead. So we stop, we start, and finally we confirm. We confirm. How do we confirm? John, 1 John 4, 1 says, don't always believe everything you hear. Now look at somebody and say, don't always believe everything you hear. Don't always believe everything you hear just because someone says it's a message from God. Test it first. Test it first to see if it really is, 1 John 4, 1. So here's just a couple of thoughts. How do I test it? Here's where I go back to hunches. So here's a couple of things. Does it line up with the word? If it's contradictory to the word, 
And if it's telling you, you don't have to love your neighbor, that's probably not right. You know, I don't have to, I don't have to work this out in my marriage. I don't have to fix this. I don't have to, you know, go and ask for forgiveness. It's probably not lining up with the word. Secondly, does it line up with your prayer life? Does it line up with what you've been praying for? Does it line up with what you've been believing for, declaring over your life, declaring over your children, declaring over your business, declaring over your future? Does it line up? Because it should confirm what you're already in. C, does it, does it line up with wise counsel and the direction of the church? If the church, we're all going this way, and then all of a sudden you find yourself going this way, if you're under the house and under the covering and in this family, we should all be going the same direction. We should all be moving forward. We should all be saying, wow, I'm being led by the Holy Spirit. So does it line up with that? Have you done your part in preparing? You know, why I say this is because so many times things are dropped in our lap. And, and if we haven't prepared for them, then maybe, maybe it's a yes, but maybe it's just not yet. So it's really knowing is that really the right thing? But maybe it's just not the right timing. Have I prepared to step into that decision? And then the last one is, is your heart fixed on the purpose or the outcome? You know, we were in uh, New Zealand a couple weeks ago, and I remember Papa Paul was preaching, and he said this, you know, in his message at one point, he was talking about, you know, so many times we're so excited because we're praying and we're asking God, God, thank you, and we're believing, and what we see is we see the tree, and we see this big tree with fruit, and it's amazing, and people are pulling the fruit from it, and in our vision, we're like, oh my God, that's so great, and we're believing for it, but what happens if God doesn't give you the tree? What if he gives you the seed? Are we willing to take the seed that God has for us and develop it? Are we willing to take that seed and say, okay, God, if that's what you are, are giving me, if that's what you're entrusting me with, then I'm willing to, to make this work. I'm willing to put in the efforts. I'm willing to grow the seed. You know, so many times we're so caught up in the outcome. It has to look a certain way. And then we, then we feel like, well, God, you're not answering. But what if he's answering, but it's in a different form than we expected? Kind of reminds me of the Israelites. You know, the Israelites, they, they, were, they were leaving. They left a, a place where they were, they were in bondage. And so now they're free, and they're running kind of, kind of away from Pharaoh and the army. And imagine, in their head, they're like, bro, we're free. Like, this is awesome. You know, like, I can't even believe this. And they're like, you know, so excited, giving each other high fives. Like, yay, we did it. And all of a sudden they realize maybe not because they came to a dead end, a cul-de-sac, you could say, because there was the Red Sea in front of them. There was on both sides, there were mountains that were way too big for them to get through. And behind them all of a sudden was Pharaoh and his army. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been in these kind of moments where I feel like, you know, God, I thought you, I thought you brought us out here for victory. I thought you brought me out here with a different outcome than I anticipated, than I expected. You know, how are you going to make this work? You know, and I don't know about you, but so many times I've found myself right there just going, let's just surrender. Like, let's just put up the white flag. Yo, Pharaoh, we were just kidding. Like, you know, we really like you guys. Don't kill us. We're, we're willing to surrender back to our past. I'm willing to surrender back to something that's comfortable. I'm willing to surrender my life back to something that is in bondage. Instead of asking God, God, will you make a way? Psalm 77, 19 says, your steps formed a highway through the seas with footprints on a pathway that no one even knew was there. <laughs> I love that. Because I've been in this tons of times. I feel like we're still there sometimes. Going, God, can you make a pathway for us that we don't even know is there? He made a pathway that nobody knew was in front of them. They were at this place. This little cul-de-sac, 
And it really means God's hidden treasure. The place where they were actually means God's hidden treasure. Isn't it amazing that God's hidden treasure is found in the places where we feel like there's no way out? And God's like, great, I have you right where I wanted you. Maybe you feel like you're in that cul-de-sac tonight. Maybe you feel like you're facing those barriers. I know for us, we've, I, I've faced plenty of barriers, barriers of financial barriers or approval barriers or energy barriers, barriers of, you know, do we have what we need, all the resources, just different barriers. But God has made a way where there seemed to be no way. And I just want to encourage you tonight, those of you who may feel somewhat like the Israelites, where you're like, God, I feel like you're taking me, but it's almost too good to be true. So you almost want to go backwards. But I want to encourage you that God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He makes a roadway in the wilderness. He will make a way for you. He will make a way for your marriage. He will make a way for your children. He will make a way for your business venture. He will make a way for you financially. He will make a way to heal you, to heal your brokenness. He will make a way. And we just have to say, God, lead me. Holy Spirit, I'm going to yield to you. I'm going to yield to your, your leading in my life. Let's not get caught up in the outcome. Let's trust that his outcome is good, that he leads us into green pastures, that he leads us beside the still waters, that he loves us. Amen. Can you stand to your feet tonight? just want to take a moment, and if there's anybody here tonight who's not received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and you want to do so tonight, we want to give you an opportunity to do so. So anybody here, maybe you, you've not received Jesus, but after hearing about tonight's message, you just realize, man, I do want to invite Jesus into my life so I can have the leading of the Holy Spirit. If that's you tonight, we'll just lead you in a simple prayer. You can just raise your hand and we'll just acknowledge you. Anybody here? Right back there. Amen. God bless you. Anybody else? Right over here. God bless you. Anybody else? Right over here. God bless you. Anybody else tonight? Awesome. All right, let's just, we're going to lead you in this prayer. We're all going to say it with you. Dear Jesus, I recognize that I'm in need of you. I'm in need of a Savior. Please come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. Today I choose to follow you. I ask you, Holy Spirit, be my guide. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. Congratulations. If you receive Christ tonight, we encourage you. There's a card in front of your chair right there on the chair in front of you. If you want to fill that out, bring it on out to the Welcome Center. You can also text SAVED1 to 44622. You can also text that and just get an opportunity. We can send you a devotional, kind of like what's next, where do I start, how do I go from here. But also just want to take a moment, just pray for you. Maybe you're here tonight and you feel like you are just asking, God, God, I've got some big decisions. Help me to follow your voice. Help me to hear you so I can make a decision based upon your word and your purposes. If, if that's you, would you just raise your hand tonight? I'm sure it's probably most of us. So let's just pray for that. Holy Spirit, right now. We call upon you as our, as our guide, and we thank you that you would lead us into all truth. I thank you, Lord, for clarity tonight. I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be able to see, Lord, without the blinders over our eyes, but to be able to see without things that are noisy and cluttered. Lord, we commit, Father, to, to dive into your word, to hear your voice even more clearly, God. And Lord, I thank you that you will make a way for us, even where there seems to be no way. We thank you that you're leading us into victory, God. We give you all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Awesome. This Sunday is Child Dedication Sunday. So if you are interested in having your baby or your 
child dedicated, you can sign up by going out to the Welcome Center and doing so. We love to do that. So if you want to just stretch your hands for the blessing, Father, we thank you. We thank you that this week will be the best week. Lord, I thank you that your anointing would just rest upon us, go before us, guide our steps, God. Lord, I thank you that we would bless, Lord, their homes, their families, their marriages, their finances, God, their businesses. In Jesus' name, we give you all the honor and praise. And everybody said amen. Awesome. We'll see you Sunday. Have a great week.